we're gonna install Raymarine Evolution Autopilot today and uh, we see how it's gonna go hopefully it's gonna work it's gotta work you gotta be very positive my 21 foot center console with 140 Suzuki outward Anything control is gonna get mounted right here. So this is this is a pretty good spot for it. Tight spot to work on it. Uh, we gotta find a good spot for the pump, hydraulic pump. All those connectors are extra connectors. Basically, we need to buy it because they don't come with the setup. So all these connectors I got it from the local marine store, and uh, they work pretty well. I put a little bit uh, tread seal, but uh, make sure it's medium strength. You don't want to get that burning. Okay. So I just put it right there a little bit the thread seal and I tied it up not to not to tight so you don't break the thread. This is what usually you get out your boat and uh, I'm gonna have to take this out and replace the with splitter something like that. Every each one. Then uh, bottom one is gonna be just a single line. The single line is gonna go right to that which is right there in the middle. Okay, um, I run out to a little bit of a problem. So, I'm just gonna show you something quick. On this one, you got two different threads. When it comes from your know, steering wheel, there's two different threads. So, that thread right what I got. It will not work if I want to go on that different thread. So what I figure, it's always good to have the choice to go to somewhere else. So what I got, I went to Lowe's and I got this compression fitting. So what I could do, I could connect it. And this is gonna work now. So, like I said, sometimes if your marine store doesn't have the parts which you need, uh, you always could stop by a Lowe's or Home Depot. Take a look if they have it. Okay, the power steering pump is already installed. I think this is the best part for it. Connection, so I end up to do it. And like I said, it's a good thing to have an option go to Home Depot or Lowe's compression fitting department. Yeah, you can find anything you need. And uh, in the end, I'm just gonna end up zip tight all the all the housing. Uh, and now we're gonna start wiring wiring it up, get the power going, and uh, put the control in. For the controls, you're gonna need two and a half holes on. And before you're gonna drill it, make sure you got enough clearance all around inside and outside, so you don't end up having any problems to put the unit in. Which doesn't. It's gonna, it's gonna work like this. Over, which goes right there. It's easy to pop it up from inside. But you gotta be very gently so you don't break it off. So you can get access to the screws and screw this unit in. Okay, so when you 
get these things to go off to a rain place. Make sure you get a pre drill. Pre drill the spruce holes. Because if the uh, fiber does a good front, you're not gonna pre drill. There's the other screws right there. Simply what you have at this cover, which goes right over that unit, clips in. Usually in the package comes uh, another cover. It's got grey color on it. So it's up to you, whatever you want to choose. It looks something like this. Make sure when you screw it in, I use this regular screwdriver, hand screwdriver, when you do the screws, so you don't break the glass. Sometimes the screw just slips and hits the glass right in the corner and you just crack the screen. So make sure you don't do that. Okay, put so GPS antenna and make up a little bracket so I don't have to drill another hole. I don't like to drill too many holes on a boulder anyway. So what I did, I make up the bracket. And the wire right below that goes through the same hole where the fish finder cables go. Okay, so we got everything hooked up and uh, all hydraulics hooked up too. And, uh, later on we're gonna test it and we're gonna calibrate and uh, see if that thing is gonna work. And it's actually pretty much very very simple to install. If you follow directions from the book, it's pretty, that's all what you need to do. Besides that, you're gonna have to hook up the hydraulics. But uh, it's not bad, not bad. Okay, so now we got everything installed. Now we're gonna bleed the system. Got this clear tubing attached to it now, and uh, it's gonna show us any bubbles coming out. So we gotta make sure we do this as much as possible to get all the air bubbles out for proper working.
Okay, so we finished the whole thing and uh, mounting the pump, electronics. I did have to upgrade my fuse box because it wasn't enough space to add another two power lines to the unit. So I got this thing working. And, uh, so like I said, power is on, unit is, unit is working. I did get some air out from the lines moving the wheel to one direction, then the other direction and um, I did like 20 times one direction, 20 times the other direction and I followed up with the power steering fluid so it's and also you could see it Use the clear tube so you can see air bubbles coming out most of the time. That took me a while. I think I did, I did more than 20 times each side. And also, what I did when I tried to set it up, control the, the motor. The oil pump literally it was working. You could hear the noise. It just not pumping the oil. So I'm gonna show you the way I did it. And it's and actually it's working good now. When you got this thing in a standby mode, I what I did, I pressed the outer. It's like cruise control, so autopilot. And uh, what I did, I turned this knob like 10 times to one side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you could hear the pump working. But for a while, what happened is that pump. Then I turned the engine So it was working but I was not turning the engine But that's why probably because it didn't have enough oil pressure and oil himself So that's the easy way to get that thing working properly and So what I did, did one side then I turned it to the other side Like 10 times and also you could hear the pump going and also probably you're gonna see that the engine is not moving at all because probably still got some air lines but it's gonna clear it out but just be a patient very patient it will clean it out eventually so that's what I did and I left that line fill it up with the extra oil just in case make sure you keep eye on it if you're gonna need the extra oil, just put it in because it will suck it in the pump, it will suck it in the oil. And, and you're gonna create the air bubbles, you don't wanna have it. So, good luck with that. And also, I'm gonna show you in a second. And 
the engine is moving, the hydraulics working well. Let's go the, uh, the other direction. get to this point it took me a while but be very patient whatever you do because I almost give up but it's a good thing I didn't do it I didn't give up so I finished what I started and uh, next thing we're gonna do we're gonna test this on water how's the whole thing operates Just gonna send it out the engine. Put it right in the middle. And that was the number. When I got there. It was right in the middle. Uh, hopefully this video was very helpful. Good luck with your installation and try the Raymarine autopilot. <laughs>